All right, you guys, please give a nice welcome. I, I rarely get to hear this man play solo. He's got a great band called Waxy. You've probably heard them. cooler punk rock that I discovered on an early age was usually off like skateboard video. The sound at the iron door was my favorite because it would just sort of swirl around that bowl. I think punk rock was a lot more of a spirit, uh, like a, a, a willingness and, a, and an attitude and a freedom. I like playing at, like at layers, I like sounds and waxy. I, I, I use a couple pedals, a buzz and delay and you know, and it actually sounds pretty close to a guitar. The, the desert means everything to me. It's where I'm from, so you have to make your own thing here. You gotta be tuned into it. I hit my strings hard. I'm not, I'm not particularly delicate. You know, if I can't hit a string hard and have it ring as long as possible, I think my technique's off. And then we, I think we all like playing music together. And that's, um, that's, you know, it's, as long as I've been playing music, that's the first time that's really happened to me. Hey, Rob. Rob. So, I think the chords are the poem, to cut, to cut. I'm going to be proud of. Uh, it's not quite done yet. Uh, for someone like me, they're never done. The new Waxy record to me is the first real Waxy record. This set of songs, I think, are in general a little more mature. From track one to the final track, you're going to see it as more a piece of work, not 12 songs on a, on a CD. Instead of maybe using a, an electric bass, we're using a stand-up bass in certain sections. Uh, instead of using a synthesizer, we're using a B3. And I think it'll capture a, a moment in time where when we look back, I think this record will represent something special. Every time you have a new record, it's like a new birth or something. Waiting and setting up stuff and listening back. And I think to a lot of people that'd probably be boring, but to me, I love it. We've all been close, you know, as musicians and friends, and that's a really important thing. Jack is really good. Music comes from the right place for him. He primarily plays keyboards, but he can play other instruments and he sings. We, we definitely have a lot coming up in Waxy, you know, with all these with the tours. And I, I've heard nothing but good things about Australia, um, and I'm really excited for the shows because of the fact that we get to, you know, play with John Garcia is a, a huge, huge, heavyweight out here in the desert, you know, and a lot of musicians uh, would be, you know, pretty excited about this kind of opportunity. Damien, you know, plays bass, and uh, he was a multi-instrumentalist and uh, just a badass songwriter. Typically, the process for Waxy would usually start with Robbie O.B., hey, I've got this idea. I think we always sort of have a skeleton of a song, and then we work really hard to try to, like, destroy that, and, and, and whatever's left in the wake is usually better. Mike, it's almost like playing with Johnny Greenwood or something from Radiohead. It's like, the dude plays everything. It's cool to be able to jump around, but I think that's, uh, 
and I don't want to be a jack of all trades, master of none. I want to try and like really get down on everything. I think my dad instilled this into me, and I don't, I don't know if it's happening or not, but I'm really trying for every song to be great. I want every song to be the best it can be. This is what I love about music. When it works, when it really works, whether it's live, whether it's on a recording, it doesn't, I can analyze it to death. It is actual magic. Music is magic, like it does, and it doesn't matter what genre it is. It's, there's two kinds of music, there's good and bad, and it's, it really is that simple. It's sort of like walking on the moon out here, man. It's just like, especially those desert nights. And you got two deserts. You got the low desert, and then you got the high desert. Pappy and Harriet is a music sanctuary. It's like church for musicians or something. It's really understated, it's super humble. Definitely secluded. It's one of those special songs where it sounds great with the band and in a full production, and it also sounds great at its, at its DNA essence, which is an acoustic strumming guitar and a wailing vocal. It's the opening song on the album, and it's really one of my personal favorites. It's a great place to, to kind of get an audience, a little audience, because there's always people around, and just kind of see how a song works. You know, a baby song works, and that's sort of how songs get better. Don't be afraid, don't run away, and be long gone. It's, it's great being on that stage. If you're like me, who has such an appreciation of the place, you certainly start feeling like, wow, there's been a lot of rad people that have been on this stage. Like playing at the Troubadour, or like playing at CPGB. It always feels great playing up there. Nick, you there? Yeah, so you got the invite. We're, we're going on that thing with Johnny to, uh, to Australia, so we want to just kind of have a little pool party. And I have, I have a base. I mean, you can bring your own if you want, but uh, I got like 15 of them. To get you on the song would be just, I think you're going to love it. No, no, dude, I'll, I'll, I'll go over with you. Cool. All right. You, you remember how to get here? Uh, Feldy will be there too. He's really looking forward to seeing you. Just got off the phone with Nick Oliveri. He's totally going to do it. He wants to record. Um, we're just going to record him during the party. When Nick says yes, I say yes too. He is a monster musician. So the book ends, or the diverse would they turn around? It was really a fun experience. He was in a great mood. I showed him the song. The song had a you know, good amount of key changes and slightly heady, and that was right up his alley. Uh, I associated him with bass. I think he's probably considered that his main instrument. Just want to get in there and go after it. Don't worry. Yeah. Yeah, you know, section by section. He just makes any band better. It doesn't matter what it is. how Nick's like trying to vibe with like the with all the fills of the drums so he's like that's like second nature shit to him you know it should be second nature to all good bass players you know like always listening to everything but he really listens on the drums it was a joy to work with him Nick's the real deal. John is a rock and roll icon. John and I talked about kind of going on the road together because we've been on the road together in the past. And, uh, and it's sort of like a three, two, three year period of like, it's finally coming together. 
Uh, so we've got a couple tours coming up. We're gonna be opening up for John Garcia's solo band, the John Garcia Band. He has this richness, this lion's roar of a voice. Just has this presence. John's one in a million. He's worked with a lot of great musicians, and so it's finally, finally like getting his group of songs together. And I, I hope he makes a lot of records. The, you know, the, the musical community and our friends really rallied around you know, what we're doing. Jessica Von Rabbit. She's the rabbit in Graham Rabbit. <laughs> and now she's doing her solo things. I think she's just calling it JVR, Jessica Von Rabbit. So Feldy picked up a telly and, and Jess got behind the drums. <laughs> she's got a great voice. Her stage presence is killer. And Feldy played his ass off. It was really, really fun. Going to Austria. Going to Australia. <laughs> Most people may not have heard of Waxy. We've done a lot of pushing for this, so I think that the and we've done we have sold a good amount of records and singles in in Australia. It's great to be a part of the night, and it's great to be able to uh, have the opportunity to win a crowd over. Hey guys. Every time we play, we make we make new fans. Every time we play. I'm, I always love meeting people. I love shaking hands. I, I love being on the road. I love playing. Turn your lamp down soft and low